Today on FinCasters, we're talking about aquarium plants with a twist. We feed it with our seahorses, we feed it with our uh, um, flounder, um, any of our tropical reef fish, uh, our live re uh, coral reef. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today we're talking about aquarium plants again. I'm going to talk about one plant in particular, show you how to keep it, show it to you in my aquarium, and some advice from an expert. It's actually easier to grow than it is to say. The name of the plant is Crinum calamistratum. I would call it a beginner plant, uh, very easy to grow, can tolerate a wide variety of conditions and you know really be a talking piece since it's so unique in appearance. This is a plant that I do keep in my own aquarium. I've got it in my planted shrimp tank. There's a nice series out there and you can click the uh, button above, the card above, and it'll take you to that if you want to see more about it. In fact, part two of that is all about planting that aquarium. So if you're interested in how I planted that aquarium from the bottom up, take a look at that. That's all using a product called Aquasolum from Seachem and that is a low-tech planted tank. No CO2, very little in terms of fertilizer. Everything is coming from the light and the substrate. But the Crinum calamistratum is one of the plants that I have in that tank. When I put together my aquascape, here is what I was thinking in terms of using this beautiful and unique plant. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the planted shrimp tank. And if you look right behind the driftwood, there is the Crinum and it's looking really good. Nice contrast to all the other plants around it. And that was my intention, is that it would sort of fill in that space right there and give me a sort of a interesting area right behind the driftwood. And just quickly, this is what I would call a character plant in your aquarium. It looks a lot different than everything else. Your eye is automatically going to be drawn to the crinum because it is so unusual. And I think that's a great thing. So when you look at your aquascape, you really want to think about, all right, I've got a plant, bunch of plants that maybe grow together and they're part of the background. And I've got foreground plants. But this is something almost like a statue or something else that you might put in your aquarium. Of course, most purists who have a planted aquarium only want rocks, plants, and driftwood, but this will be an eye catcher. So where you put it in the tank is important. You need to think about that, and Brandon talked about that as well. In the aquas tape, I would either put it in the background areas or the centerpiece. For me personally, I, I like it as a centerpiece off to the left or the right side of maybe a large sword plant, but the leaves will wave in the current, and if you can put it where the, the flow comes into your tank, you'll see some nice waving leaves in the current. Now this is a bulb plant and one of the things you think about with some of these bulb plants is that they go through a dormant stage. In other words, the, the bulb is fine but just its natural life cycle is, is that for a month or two months the plant just dies back so it can feed back into that bulb and, and then it'll come back. And if you don't know to anticipate that with some bulb plants, what happens is you think the plant just mysteriously died. And there can be some protocol involved with if you have a bulb plant, maybe you're supposed to take the bulb out of the aquarium, let it sit for a little while, and then put it back in the tank. And that's, that's kind of a mess. Well, I, that is not the case with the Crinum calamistratum. This is a bulb plant that you can put in your tank and you can leave it in your tank. So what you want to do is when you purchase the plant, you're going to find a layer on the bottom of the bulb where the roots are. You're going to want to bury just up to the roots in the substrate, you know, and leave the kind of top of the bulb a little bit immersed over the substrate. And as long as you put just the root system in there, it won't cause it to rot or anything and it'll grow and flourish in your tank. One of the other things that Brandon says, if you do want to take this out of your tank, you can make it flower, and here's how he suggested you do that. If you start to want to make it flower, sometimes you can take it out of your tank, plant it in some soil and mist it, and you'll get a flower spike because it thinks, that, like in nature, the lake is drying up, and in that point, that's when it goes to flower, and sometimes you can even produce seeds on it. 
Now, I have to tell you that I will never be taking this plant out of my aquarium. I'm very happy where it is. I'm, I'm waiting for it to sort of flow out even more. It's grown quite a lot since I put it in there. It's probably been in there for, I want to say, two and a half, three months now, and it's grown quite a lot. Uh, but I want to see, I really want to see it push those leaves out over towards the front a little bit, and I'm going to keep an open area around it so it can dominate the middle of that aquarium. Very excited about how I think that can look eventually, especially with the shrimp walking out on the leaves and everything. I think that's that's going to make a really nice look for the middle of my planted shrimp tank. There are accounts of the crinum growing leaves out to four feet. Uh, those would probably, I would guess, be under high light conditions in a much larger aquarium than my 55, uh, probably with CO2 injection and with a lot more fertilizer. Again, I'm looking for slow growth in this plant. I'm doing a low-tech tank, and I'm very happy with how the crinum is doing in my aquarium. If it starts growing four-foot leaves, I probably uh, am going to have to think about putting something else in there. But that is a possibility. It is mentioned, and I'll put some links to some of those accounts and some other, what some other people think about it online. So here's the bottom line on how to keep the crinum. I'll just give you some very quick water parameters. So the crinum calamistratum comes from West Africa. I've heard Cameroon in particular. Lighting demands are medium. pH not very sensitive from 6 to 8. Growth demands relatively easy. It uh, does come from a bulb and this is not a real fast growing plant but it can grow very large as I said before. Uh, you can see leaves up to uh, 3 or 4 feet long and it will be a nice submersed plant. Uh, low light it's is very sufficient you know under a medium light it's going to do a little bit better but low light is very sufficient and it's a good plant for beginners to have something very unique in their tank. So there's a look at Crinum calamistratum. It's a nice character plant for your aquarium. It's relatively easy to do, thanks to Brandon McLean for his advice. And if you like that shrimp tank, once again, do check out part two in particular of my Aquasolum series on that. It shows how I planted that entire aquarium. And if you like freshwater shrimp, of course, there's uh, several parts in the series right now, and we'll be adding to it as we move along. But that low-tech shrimp tank is doing very well. So uh, that is something that a lot of people are looking for, is a tank that doesn't take a lot of work, and it does grow plants and and so we'll continue to take a look at that uh, there are more planted fin casts you can just click on the box there and you can see other uh, advice from Brandon and some of the other planted aquariums that I've worked on over the years good advice there and if you're on the salt water the marine side uh, I've got a lot of great stuff out there on coral reefs and some some good advice on how to automate your aquarium so check out my marine series as well that's all for now and I'll see you in the next fin cast